Hey there folks, welcome to Spectrum Pulse. We talk about music, movies, art, and culture. And here's one you've all been waiting for and you all voted on Patreon for me to cover. The newest album from The Weeknd called Starboy. You know, I get the strong impression that The Weeknd never thought he'd become this famous. Admittedly, some of this is all guesswork, but if you go back through his earlier mixtapes and even his earlier albums, it became very clear that despite how influential his sound was becoming and all the big cosigns behind him, he had his own sound, his own style, his own distinctive lane. And considering how bleak and graphic that lane often was, he probably never expected to cross over into the mainstream. Sure, you could make arguments that he was trending more towards a pop sound on Beauty Behind the Madness that he was intending something to cross over, but also keep in mind that despite having two songs go to number one, the bigger hit of that album wasn't Can't Feel My Face, but The Hills. Not the song where he embraces inner Michael Jackson and had a ton of fun, but the track where he ripped away the veneer to reveal the toxic, self-destructive, self-loathing, and nihilism that lurked at the very base of it. In comparison to obvious singles like Can't Feel My Face or the even stronger song In The Night, it was a pretty hard left turn, and as of now, it's his biggest hit. And you know, I get the feeling that this was not lost on the weekend. If we were going to reward his darker impulses, that seemed like enough of an endorsement for him to plow into even weirder or more experimental territory. Hell, everybody who has watched Billboard Breakdown has seen how much praise I gave False Alarm for its manic, dark wave inspired sound and style. And when the weekend cited his inspirations were The Smiths, Bad Brains, Talking Heads, and Prince for this album, well, my only surprise is that he didn't cite more gothic acts, given how obvious their influence has been for him over the past couple of years. But at the same time, I didn't expect this album to fly completely off into left field, even if I kind of wished it had. Credits from Kendrick Lamar, Future, Daft Punk, Lana Del Rey proved that he was keeping his feet pretty close to the mainstream, or at least mainstream adjacent. And that's before you dug into the production credits. In short, The Weeknd now has an institution of modern pop songwriters and producers behind him. This was not going to be allowed to get that weird. And yet still, I had liked Starboy and I had loved False Alarm. This record was was easily one of my most anticipated of 2016. So, did it manage to deliver? Well, okay, let me put it like this. On the song on this album called Reminder, The Weeknd shows outright contempt for getting a Teen Choice Award, which would kind of make complete sense, given how adult and relentlessly nihilistic his material's been. He's no role model, only for him to turn around and for the majority of Starboy make his least experimental or risky album of his entire career. At least Beauty Behind the Madness, for all of its wild inconsistencies, was willing to plumb back into some of the darkness to balance its more poppy flavor, it tried more interesting things, and yet with only a few choice exceptions, Starboy tilts even further away from that darker edge. Forget the bite or firepower that came with Thursday or Echoes of Silence or any real shot of going experimental in lyrics or instrumentation. This is a much more tepid release, and I'm not remotely convinced that it connects at all. And you all thought Kissland was watered down. Now, none of this means that Starboy is bad. Again, it's got a couple great songs that I really did love that probably save it, but while the instrumental tone might be more even, the level of quality certainly is not, which to me smacks of having entirely too many people involved in the writer's room and diluting the process in order to maximize the hits. In other words, it's more of a pop album, so you get what you pay for. And to explain why behind all this, we're going to flip things around and start with the thematic arc and the lyrics of this album, most of which focuses on The weekend's newfound celebrity and success and his relationship with it, which, as I mentioned earlier, this was not something to be expected, but of course course he's gonna ride it out and reap all the rewards. Now, you would think, naturally like I did, that it would lead to even wilder, greater heights of debauchery, but instead we get more of the opposite, which to be fair you could have seen coming in some of the framing as early as Beauty Behind the Madness. His self-proclaimed damnation that he's always considered a natural consequence of his lifestyle, scrabbling to get to the top, but now that he's there and he's looking down, that emotional dynamic is much less reckless and harsh, still paranoid and somewhat clinical, but but now he feels that he can show more of a softer side that he's actually doing so. But throughout the course of this album, it becomes abundantly clear that he's not entirely comfortable living in the same world that his music has shaped, his darkness has defined his life, and I don't think he's entirely on board with it becoming the established norm for everyone else. You see that implied in tracks like Secrets and True Colors, where he wants that girl to give up the darker secrets the same way he has, or how the girl's fear of him on All I Know can be kind of unnerving for him, or the odd sense of surprise that 
runs through Love to Lay, where girls are seeking casual sex the same way that he did. Of course, the larger arc of his continued self-flagellation, where just like on Beauty Behind the Madness, he's extremely hesitant to enter any sort of deeper connection despite the girls who want it, but by the final four songs in this album, unlike the end of Beauty Behind the Madness with Angel where he did let her go, this time he embraces that love, he makes that chance, he goes for it. And yes, that is emotional growth, that's maturity, that's a defined shift away from the nihilism that's always flowed through a lot of his material, a tad hyperbolic with his proclamations of dying and killing for this girl on Die For You, but you know what, he's heading in the right direction thematically, but unfortunately this came at a price, and this is the first big problem with this album, the shift in language. Even when The weekend's nihilism on previous records got kinda tiresome and fell towards similar topics and themes that we'd heard before, his poetry was often good enough to capture the details details and paint more of a distinct picture about his life, his actions, and the women around him. But here, outside of the title track and False Alarm, we don't really get that same sort of detail even compared to the last album. Many of these songs feel really underwritten, with repetition instead of detail, to even where retracing the come up on sidewalks feels like material we've seen before, even with a pretty decent Kendrick verse. It feels like the majority of the lyrical details was used up by the time we hit Rockin' five songs in, with Six Feet Under pulling from his much stronger collaboration with Beyonce six inch from earlier this year with a content even as it samples low life his collaboration from future we get some additional detail that shows up on ordinary life where the excess juxtaposed with nihilism slips back in including some apt references to religious iconography david carradine and james dean of course he goes to those reference points but from there it seems to lack a little bit of distinguishing detail or flair it raises the uncomfortable question that if you strip out the nihilism the bleak debauchery out of his music what do you have left with the weekend and sadly i I'm not getting a lot. It also makes some of the guest performances make a little bit less sense. I obviously get the parallel of using Future and All I Know, but The Weeknd is pushing out of his self-loathing recklessness in the arc of the album, where it's clear that Future is still kind of reveling in as much as he can. And Lana Del Rey's presence is even more tenuous now. Her attempts at cooing on Stargirl interlude are god-awful, but she also seems like the sort of girl that The Weeknd would leave behind now for the stable relationship that he wants, so I really don't get much of her appearance here. Of course, this leaves Daft Punk and The Weeknd themselves, and this is where we have to get into more of the actual music. And for the record, while the auto-tune on songs like Sidewalks can be kind of blatant, I wasn't really bothered by it. He's using it for the same way that Kanye did, for deflection and internalizing emotion. And Daft Punk easily delivered the two of the tightest screws on this album, thanks to the title track and I Feel It Coming. The latter with its liquid, 80s-inspired major synths and the slightly more textured percussion is probably the brightest and happiest song that The Weeknd has ever recorded. And sure, it shows some obvious influence from Michael Jackson, but I definitely wish The Weeknd had brought more of the same sort of edge and dramatic intensity that MJ had in his delivery and instrumentation at his peak. And what's exasperating is that The Weeknd has proven plenty capable of doing that. False Alarm was the best example, it's by far the best song here, most because it actually has an edge courtesy of the darker vocals, the wiry guitars, the sharper beat, the dark wave vibe. But the thematic arc unfortunately has pushed The Weeknd's delivery and production into to a lot softer territory. Like, I feel it coming, but there's nowhere near the same sense of dramatic urgency that that track is at coast by on a pretty good groove. But beyond that, the album starts off with a promise on Starboy and the harsher synths on Party Monster that breaks into this bassy trap beat, or the bleak flat keys and firm bass of Reminder against the hi-hat, and of course, False Alarm, that song still rules. But by the time we get to rockin', this album slips into a much cleaner vibe that's yet much less interesting from the reverb-saturated yet inert 90s house vibes of Rockin' or Secrets. Sorry, but that guitar and Tears of Fears interpolation is not fooling me. To those drippy, chimes touch R&B vibes of True Colors that The Weeknd would have scoffed at five years ago. Sure, the wheedling guitar textures on Sidewalk, Six Feet Under, courtesy of returning producer Doc McKinley, they were definitely appreciated by the time we get back to the limp Max Martin produced blocky 80s disco of Love to Lay or A Lonely Night, or the auto-tune crooning and pitch shifting of attention that I really found exasperating. You start seeing seriously missing the textured, grimy bite of Elangelo, whose production is definitely sorely missed here. I have no idea why The Weeknd dropped him. Until Daft Punk pulled things together for a low-key finality, and outside of the darker bite of Ordinary Life, the rest of this record, it really feels like a slog to me, with vocal production quality that's all over the place, and only barely distracting from the washed-out, bass-heavy beats and the dreary synths that, frankly, we've heard him do before with more bombast and texture and energy. Look, folks, 
I'm not going to mince words here. I was really excited for this album coming off of False Alarm and Starboy, and yet this is a disappointment, and it gives me a really bad feeling going forward surrounding the weekend's artistic direction. I can definitely appreciate it stepping out of the melodramatic nihilism. It was definitely getting old, and it shows the weekend growing emotionally as an artist. But he does realize he can tell stories of detail and flair without relying on those themes, right? He does realize he can give music more of an edge or more of a pulse, add back some of that dramatic swell that he's always had a knack for really keeping control of without that greater sense of momentum and bombast this record especially on its back half becomes pretty flabby with more filler than can really be justified now again there are enough good moments to push this album to a light six out of ten but if you're a fan of the weekend especially of thursday and echoes of silence and if you were a little put off by beauty behind the madness this record will be kind of hard to justify especially to you otherwise I'd give this a listen or two, but The weekend is capable of being so much better than just kind of complacent. On sidewalks, he challenged those who supposedly made him in order to replace him. If he's not careful, he will end up getting replaced, and that'll be a goddamn tragedy. So yeah, thanks a lot for watching. Like to like and subscribe, I'd be more than grateful. I got the poll up here, so all you weekend fans who tell me that I'm wrong, there's your opportunity to prove it. But yeah, I was kind of interested in what you guys think of on this. I can picture this being kind of a divisive album with Weekend fans, well, even hardcore Weekend fans. I'm not sure how much they will embrace this, given that texture really isn't there in the same way. Um, beyond that, anything else I might be able to do to improve my presentation, I'm all ears. If you guys want to request albums, I recommend you take a look at my Patreon, where every so often we actually go through on our regular schedule and you guys vote on what you want to see more. And coming up on Saturday, you guys have the option to recommend albums to that schedule. So, there's the option, there's the link right there. I'd be happy if you guys took a look. Beyond that, I'm Mark, you're watching Spectrum Pulse, and I'll see you next time.